Now since opening this envelope and finishing the video, a whole year has managed to slip by. And that's because the watch inside that you're about to see was really, really reluctant to let itself be fixed. Okay, this is a trench watch, so I should be in my comfort zone on this video because I know a thing or two about watches and I know a thing or two about trenches. So where did I get this knowledge of what it's like to live in a trench? Well, for 20 years before I was a watchmaker, I was a serving officer in the British Army. I served in the first Gulf War and in Bosnia and in other places as well. So I do know a little bit about trenches, but not as much as this man. I mean, not even close because this man knows more about soldering in his little finger than I will ever know or ever wish to know. And as we do the restoration of this watch, we're going to learn a little bit about him and why he's important. Hmm. I would say the mainspring is broken. You can wind it and wind it and wind it and there is no tension coming onto the spring. So either it's broken or become detached from the arbor. Okay. Now these old trench watches evolved from pocket watches and they're held in the case in exactly the same way as most pocket watches. So I'm just taking out the case screws to release the movement and then I'll flip the watch over and remove the bezel with the cracked old yellow glass on it and the movement will pop out the front just like a pocket watch. A voila, just like that. Now this old piece of perspex definitely needs removing. It's really, really horrid. And in fact, I've got a new piece of glass ordered and that alone is gonna make a massive difference to how this watch looks, especially when the case is cleaned up because the case, as you can see, is covered in black silver oxide. dial retention screws on this movement are well designed and I'm just releasing them now and we'll take off the dial next. Okay well that is about as simple and classic as it gets but I can see we've already got a problem because the setting lever jumper spring is not there anymore it's broken off. Now if you don't know what that is stick with it because I'm gonna to have to either make a new one which is tricky or source a new one so mmm that's not good mmm this ratchet wheel screw is tight 
really really tight and the screw's quite tiny so there's there's always a risk of breaking off the head in fact it's happened to me on several occasions uh, I need to go carefully here <clears throat> yeah this is tight this is this is not good at all mm, no 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 that's not good that's not good at all <sighs> okay my defense this thread is about 0.8 of a millimeter and it's been in there a hundred years or more and was probably put in by some gorilla in the trench watch factory never mind onward now they're called trench watches for a reason because they became popular in the first world war and were worn by men like this now this man's name is gilbert hudson and he's pictured here in 1918 at the end of the great war as a temporary gentleman temporary gentleman is a interesting and slightly disturbing title for someone to have but its origin lies in the fact that the British Army started that war with a full complement of officers that they would have deemed to have been gentlemen. But such was the ferocity of that war and the losses were so huge that the British Army quickly ran out of men for officers that it would normally have given the term gentleman to. So it created this disturbing term called temporary gentleman. Now Gilbert started the war as a lance corporal so he fought for the full four years in France and worked his way up um, you know into literally dead man's shoes and ended up commanding as an officer in the machine gun corps and four years in France in the machine gun corps is about as tough as it gets. So the diagnosis was right and the mainspring, as you can see, is definitely broken. This is the top of the barrel arbor screw, which sheared off. And here is the arbor itself with the screw stuck in it. And that is, because you can't get to the other side of it, that is a big, big problem. And this is the component that should have the setting lever spring attached to it. But right here, it's missing. Okay, I waited a whole year before my save search on eBay alerted me to the fact that there was an identical movement up for grabs so I bought it and the first thing that we're going to do is harvest the component with the setting lever jumper spring. Okay that looks good that is a pretty much exact match so chuffed with that. And moving on then to the barrel arbor and we're going to have to release the barrel arbor screw. Uh, the same one that we had problems with last time. I don't believe this one is tight as well. But it is. No. This can't happen again. This is tight. It's really tight. Okay, time to regress to my own tank fixing days. And if in doubt, hit it with a hammer. Nah, still won't budge. This is, this is proper tight again. No, 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 I waited a year for this, no, no, <sighs> no. So it is time to bring out the, uh, the watchmaker's lathe to sort this issue out and uh, 
My little lathe doesn't actually have a drilling attachment for the tailstock, so I have uh, made one out of a pin vise and just pared that down so it fits in there like so, which is actually a pretty good solution. These uh, six millimeter old vintage launch lays are pretty accurate. So I'll give you a close up now of uh, how we're gonna drill out the stub end of that screw so that we can uh, fit a new one. Now we have an expression in the United Kingdom and it's called being a jammy git because <laughs> that is lucky. That is the thread right out. Um, of course the drill is going in the right direction to remove the thread so and it just popped out for me. That is really really good news. And now I have to make a screw to replace the one that was broken. And a good place to start is with a screw of a slightly bigger size. Okay, before I clean the movement in the ultrasonic cleaner, I'm just gonna put the balance back on the movement. So at this point in the process, I popped downstairs for a cup of tea and turned it on the news and saw this. This is an Andy Warhol painting that has just been sold for 138 million pounds. And it is the perfect leading to introduce the sponsors of my video, an organisation called Masterworks. Now that is really, really clean. I'm chuffed with that. So let's talk about Masterworks for a bit. OK, so you might not have heard of Masterworks, but it's a unique organisation, which in my view was hit upon something pretty compelling. And this is where the Andy Warhol comes in because you know what they've done is underpinned by the power and the importance of art. And just gotta put a little bit of grease in there for the setting lever. Okay, I hear you say that's not unique. Loads of companies understand this and I would agree. But Masterworks are harnessing this power to help investors make shrewd, ethical, financial investments. Masterworks is, as far as I'm aware, and please correct me in the comments section if you think I'm wrong, the only outfit on the whole planet through which you can actually invest in specific works of contemporary and fine art. Now that's brilliant. Personally, I love art. It's what keeps us all out of the gutter and I have no problem with great art fetching, you know, very large sums of money. And those of you who follow my channel will have seen from time to time paintings in the background. Now, nobody's going to make much money investing in the stuff I have in my own home, but it's there because I love it. Now, happily, Masterworks has the resources and the expertise to bring you a step closer to the more important pieces. So when Masterworks approached me with the idea of sponsoring this video, it was something that actually chimed with me personally. So these wheels in the powertrain can be a little bit tricky sometimes to get in, but they are very, very clean. So getting back to Masterworks, if you are an investor, looking to expand your portfolio in a fresh and exciting way then masterworks is an option definitely worth investigating now i do think that an appreciation for the work itself is a good companion for such a move but it isn't essential from a strictly financial perspective the figures 
make pretty interesting reading. Now I'm a watchmaker, not an investment guy, but even I know these figures are pretty impressive. And it's all driven by the power of the love of fine art. And this is the jewel for the escape wheel and the microscope is really, really helpful in helping you locate the pivot of the escape wheel into that jewel. And here it is done. And here is the moment of truth because I'm now putting in the screw that I made into the repaired barrel arbor. So, fingers crossed, this goes okay. Okay, that looks good. This next section on cleaning the case is self-explanatory and you may catch a glimpse of a very attractive watch on my wrist and if you want more information on that then check out the link in the description. So my wife maintains that this photo was taken in about 1984, about the year that I came out of Sandhurst. I think it's a little bit older than that. Anyway, the gentleman on the left is Gilbert Hudson, who survived the First World War. Uh, the lady on his right is his wife. And the little baby she's holding is a girl 
who subsequently grew up and became my wife. So, back to the watch. Let's finish this up. And this is the bit that I always really enjoy, putting the balance back in when all the hard work on the movement has been accomplished. So here we go. <laughs> <laughs> 